Hello. Here are five things I like to keep in mind when lighting a character or scene. Backlighting is by far one of the most powerful ways to achieve the cinematic look. It's also the easiest. Simply place your subject between the camera and the primary light source. This wraps the light around the edges of the subject and helps separate it from the background. It also casts shadows across the subject's face which creates a lot of visual interest. It's not just for close-up shots either. Here's a wider angle with the same principle. Backlighting is my favourite way to light pretty much anything. This shot is just a plane with an image on it, and an HDRI with the strength set really low to help fill in the subject's jacket. On a real film set, light gets bounced around to help shape it and target specific areas. We can emulate this in Blender by creating a plane, giving it a basic principal material, setting the display mode to bounds, and hiding the camera visibility. Now we can position it to reflect lighting back onto our subject's unlit side to act as a fill light. You can see the before and after. Once we've added the fill, the eye that was previously in shadow is now slightly illuminated. This same technique can be used to create barn doors, which help control light spilling onto things we don't necessarily want lit. Alternatively, I like to create a second material in my emissive cube, set the emission strength to zero, select the faces I don't want to emit, and assign it. Now the light is more directional and controlled. Scenes become more believable when we add a reason for a light source. This orange glow on the subject's neck is actually a large orange light, but I've added a small tungsten globe in the background to help sell the shot. The light from this lamp is far too weak to reach our character, but our brains like to connect the dots. I typically use emissive cubes as my light sources instead of Blender's built-in lights, unless I'm making use of IES textures. I find it much easier to just scale a cube and move it away from the subject to soften the light, instead of playing around with the radius slider. These also have camera visibility on by default, so if I leave one on in the background, I allow happy accidents with the bokeh, which wouldn't be visible with a normal light. An easy way to make your lighting realistic is to just emulate a real light source. Let's build out a quick node tree. Add two value nodes, you can rename them using F2. Plug the temperature value into a black body node, then plug that into the color of the emission shader. Plug the other value into a math node, set it to divide, and set the bottom value to 683. Plug this into the strength socket. Now we can copy the Kelvin and Lumen values of a real light to achieve a physically based result. The other piece of the puzzle is understanding light fall off. Smaller lights that are closer to the subject will create hard shadows, while larger lights further away tend to soften them. Keep this in mind when thinking about your specific lighting setup. In this image, I used quite a small light that was actually right in front of the subject's face. You just can't see it because I've disabled the camera ray visibility. If you don't have experience with real lights, I recommend reading up on color temperature and light fall off. I usually avoid RGB lights unless I'm trying to achieve a specific look. Instead, I stick to real world light colors using the black body node and use common color temperatures like 3200 Kelvin or 6500 Kelvin. By default, this is only supported in cycles, but there is a free add-on which allows you to use color temperature in EV as well. I'll link it in the description. HDRIs are a great way to add ambient light into any shot. Just keep the strength low unless you're specifically lighting for daylight. Some Rembrandt purists might be upset that I didn't mention the glorious upside down triangle, but I intentionally left it out of this video because there really aren't any hard set rules. If something looks cool, keep it. This shot in particular is pretty unconventional. As I mentioned, it's using a small, hard light right in front of the subject's face, but I thought it looked cool, so I kept it. I typically underexpose my shots or use very minimal lighting setups. A lot of these were just one or two lights. By keeping things simple, we avoid having to micromanage and instead get to focus on the overall look, instead of tweaking sliders. Experiment with unconventional angles and colours. Your own artistic impression will start to shine through on your renders and make them unique. And with tools like Mid Journey and Dali pumping out thousands of images every day, breaking the rules might just help make you stand out. If you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone. I hope you found the video helpful.